Welcome, everybody. It's time once again for the next chapter with Charlie Hedges. As he explores turning the page on his life and yours. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Paul. So uh, tell me, how are you holding up in this life of an introvert's dream? I'm, stay, stay home, do a bit of work, read, write, some, and at night watch a movie. You know, I've been, like we said last week, I've been preparing for this my entire life. I think so. I'm much more of a people person. I'm I'm used to being in studio and and it's all, everybody's right there. So it's, it's an adjustment here. You know, and I think we're all going to figure out, is this something that we're going to continue to do more of? Or is this just, we just going to... Go right back to the way things were. I don't know. Well, you know, it's, I, I have a feeling it's going to be somewhere in between. Probably. That we are certainly not going to go back to the way it was before, but it's not going to be exactly the way it is now. And But who knows? I, 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 have, I have elected to not do any predictions of what things are going to be in the future because we are in such uncertain times, and the future is equally or more more, more, um, what word am I thinking of? Mysterious. Certain than (laughs) it is now. Yeah. However, you know, now I do, I do, I do recognize that not everybody's living in an introvert's dream. Uh, For most people, this is not the dream world, but it is one of chaos and a great need to get it out, socialize, do their work, you know, resume life as normal and yet we are stuck for a while. You know, I, some people are saying eight weeks, ten weeks. You know, I think that's, in my opinion, I think that's that's optimistic. Um, you got any thoughts on that? I think it's going to go into May. Clearly, we're doing this at the early part of April, and our hope that somehow it would just be three or four weeks is probably unrealistic, simply because how do we know when it's over? Without testing everybody, do we just sort of base it on hospitalizations and, gee, there are numbers coming in the hospital less, so I guess it's safe and we peek our head? I think it's going to be slow because we're all going to be nervous. Do we immediately run back to work? Do we immediately rehire everybody? Do we? I think it's going to take a while to for us to feel safe going out. So uh, I think those are the two issues. How do we know when it's over and how quickly will we feel safe to resuming? Yeah, I, I, you know, I concur. I think those are the two major issues. And, and one, how do we know that it's over when our testing and our data is so, um, so lacking in, in, in its, it's accuracy. You know, there are so many more people that have the, the virus that just haven't been tested for because we don't have adequate testing facilities. That's the one I can't wrap my head around. I can go get tested yeah. on Ancestry tomorrow and find out my uh, DNA, where my ancestors came from. I don't know why they can't come up with something quick, easily easily distributed, drive through, mail it out, whatever. I know, that, I know it's probably... It is more complicated than I think it is, but it can't be that complicated to get millions of these test kits out there. And and we should uh, clearly have thought of this sooner, earlier, whoever. Last well, administration, you know, this, this is a learning experience. I don't, yeah. you know, I'm not in the, I'm, you know, I, I, I refuse to get into the blame game. I think nobody really could have predicted this going on. I mean, there's so many different threats to our society and to our civilization and that you know which one do you respond to and do you prepare for you know we could so i'm i'm just saying i think i think this was handled well in some places and not so well in another you know although i'm i'm i hadn't been a fan of newsom until this and I'm giving the man great credit. I, I, the man. I'm with you. I think. Uh, I think he's responded. I think. I think the governors have responded better than the federal government has. The federal government started off denying it, delaying it, and then deciding it really was a big deal. And they clearly didn't have enough stockpiles of stuff. They didn't have enough tests. The first ones they put out were wrong. You know, all sorts of just miscues. And maybe that happens in any kind of major crisis, but. We got to do better the next time because this could come back well, again. Well, we were more interested in economics than we were yes, in health. Exactly, and and that has since changed. 
Well, and, and enough of that. You know, now last week, Paul, we began a novel approach to our shows by introducing this thing we're calling Conversations in Quarantine. And we are doing this in response to the suggestion by several thought leaders they that are suggesting making phone calls to friends, especially long lost friends, is a good way to regain some kind of social connection with people we care about. And we decided, you and I decided to do just that, except we are going to be doing it live. <laughs> do it live, yeah. <laughs> and so I have no, I, well, I have a little idea. There's a couple of questions I want to ask our guest, but uh, for the most part, I have no idea what we're going to talk about. And and today we're going to talk to my dear friend, Sherry Benjamins, who was on the show just over one year ago. Now, Sherry is the president of a very influential um, S. Benjamins and Company that deals from recruitment to strategy to teams to sales. And, and I love her tagline of her business. And Sherry's actively involved in the business of advancing the human side of the, of business. Advancing the human side of business. I think that's, I, I love that concept. And if I wasn't retired, I'd tell Sherry I want to come to work for her. <laughs> um, um, now, a most interesting factoid is the last time Sherry was on the next chapter with Charlie. You, you know, why don't we get Sherry on the line so I can remind her of this? Okay. It- there we go. That's not, now I know. This is Sherry. Sherry, welcome to the next chapter with Charlie. Say hi to Charlie Hedges. Hey, hello. Hey, you know what? I've been giving a brief introduction because what we kind of want to do is is just jump right into our conversations in quarantine. You know, you and I talked about that. Yeah. And, and I was rehearsing what we did last time, and then I said, you know, before the, you, 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 were, you were on the show just right. over one year ago. This is April 8th, oh. and you were on the show March 8th. Wow. Is when is when we produced your show, mm-hmm. and and uh, as I look through my notes on that, check this out, Sherry, and it's kind of a most interesting factoid. The last time you were on the next chapter with Charlie, we talked about our subject was work reimagined, mm-hmm. and your expertise in consulting with senior management on strategic and wor- worker issues, and this is what we called it. An unpredictable and changing business landscape. (laughs) Yeah, understatement. That was that was one year ago. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah, it's. uh, I I think uh, uh, if we thought work was unpredictable one year ago, we certainly have upped the ante in that game. Yeah. Now. I know know, for sure. well, sorry that I took a t- I took a little time, but I have I didn't realize when we set this. Well, I did know that today is the first night of Passover, and so oh. about dealing with Passover virtually. So, of course, none of us in the family are getting together, but we are going to do a call around five thirty. That's an hour. Okay, we'll now. we'll be done before then. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I, I we certainly don't want to interfere with Passover. Yeah, kind of strange, strange way to celebrate this holiday for us. But well, I know you you pass over us Easter and yeah, you know we have Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and all yeah. these different things that you know this I is know. this whole week is yeah. dedicated. Yeah, but, but what, so how do you want to um, how do you want to start this? Well, let me um, let me start and. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some catching up, and then okay. I I received a newsletter from you that I was most intrigued by, and there were a couple of questions you had in the newsletter, and I mm-hmm. thought you and I would play a game, and we would answer the questions that you put in the newsletter. Okay. And we would answer them answer them personally because I thought they were really really good questions. Yeah. That's but first of all, you, you know, I'm doing this in response to the suggestions by many that we. Call somebody, and especially kind of a a, a, a long, not lost friend, but not mm-hmm. you know having contacted much, mm-hmm. and just to see what's what's been going on and what's been what they've been up to. So, um, yeah, tell me what is what has life been like for you in these days of quarantine? Well, it's 
um, forced me into this whole virtual world in a way that is not a bad thing, actually, because I had just launched this millennial group I told you about, a peer learning group of nine wonderful young early careerists from nine different companies. And when we started it in February, I asked them specifically, well, in the planning stages, I asked them, do you want to work, uh, do you want to meet monthly in person or do you want to meet virtually? Oh, no, we don't want to meet virtually. We really want to meet in person together. Oh, really? And That's surprising. That, yeah, it was. So the first meeting, thank goodness, we did meet in person because we got a chance to really know each other and deeply talk about them and their lives and, and moments in their life that really helped define them. So it was very introspective and maybe allowed them to be vulnerable for sure. So then February is, okay, got that, March, um, virtual uh, Zoom call. And yesterday was our second virtual call. So being, um, so forcing myself into this uh, virtual conference call with a with as much intimacy as you can as, is what I'm learning about now being, you know, probably will be doing the, at least another couple months like this. Um, so that's kind of intriguing. And, and then, of course, figuring out how to take care of ourselves um, mentally and physically when you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you're here. Uh, so you, you know what's amazing with me, Sherry, is I'm retired. I, you know, I volunteer with um, with a charity that, that I'm still actively involved in. Mm -hmm. you, you know, virtually. Yeah. Um, um, well, not just virtually, but by virtual means. Um, mm -hmm. But but you know, I have my blog and my podcast and. You know, we're applying for our company is applying for a PPP loan with the CARES Act. And, mm. you know, I stay pretty busy. You know, it's just yeah. it's 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 amazing yeah. that, that for a retired guy. Yeah. Okay. You know, my my night is busy until about six or seven o'clock at night. And mm -hmm. and then with my morning routine, you know, we'll talk about that later. You know, yeah. that takes an hour and a half to two hours every morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you know what I'm curious. You know something you 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 touched on. Now this may be confidential information. If it is, and just let me know. But mm -hmm. I don't want to know the results. But I want to. I'm, I'm curious of the process. You said when you got together with your millennial group, which I know you're in love with, mm -hmm. um, and you get to know each other deeply. Uh, uh, what's the process there? How do you? How do you get to know each other deeply that don't yeah. know people that don't know each other yeah. and they're meeting for the first time? What kind of process do you use to do that? Um, so we, and I have a partner in crime on this, the woman that wrote that wrote with me on the newsletter, Tammy Seacard, she's been working with me on the design and the curriculum for the group. And by the way, I don't, I, I don't call them the millennial group except when I'm, <laughs> it's an easy, uh, when I talk with someone like, um, it, you know, it's easy to say, oh, it's the millennial group, but it's an early career professional group. And uh, they don't want to be called millennials, you know. So that's Yes, of course. But anyway, how we do it. So I chose uh, the Bill George authentic leadership work to be the first dive into who are these people? And I like his work. It's um, He has a book he had, uh, one of his bestsellers was called Discover Your True North. Oh, yes. And you and I chatted about that. That's yes, just and a he fascinating sounding book. Crucible Moments. Yes. We all have crucible moments in our life, right? The Many of them that really help define who we are. And that is the exercise we used to have them think about those moments in their life and to share them with us. And oh, that's a brilliant idea. That really does get into some sort of yeah. uh, vulnerability. And, right. and yet there's something safe about it. It's not so vulnerable. Right. Tell me your, right. your deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. But it's, yeah. something that, it's something that shows a bit of vulnerability, but also shows a response to that vulnerable 
right. situation and how you and how you either succeeded out of it or still working on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was that was the first um, several hours of work with them, and then we had we gave them. Wait a minute. Several hours. Yeah. How many people? Nine. Nine, and it took several hours. Several hours, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sherry, you're good. That's really uh, <laughs> yeah. well. I mean, to be able to get people engaged for that long—that's really, that's really amazing. Yes, and they really liked each other. It was so, you know, how these folks were selected. Um, I found companies, that, you know, that it, uh, and I talked to a lot of companies, but I found nine that really believed in development for folks early in their career. And they said, this is the person I want in your group, your first group. And so I didn't know these individuals. So when we, and I try, and the people that, the sponsors are people that I know and trust and they know me. And I think that was a big part of that. So when those nine people came together, uh, they had met in December for for just a simple cocktail hour. But the real work was in February when they met for the first time to talk about themselves, and I was so grateful that they just clicked. They um, are all yearning for a peer group to really confide in in a trusted way and learn from and admit they have a lot to learn. So it was really fantastic that it was a good, it was good chemistry all around. Yeah, and yeah. I imagine they're in, they're in, um, they're not in competing, competing industry, so they don't have to worry about what they share is going to be yeah. taken to another right. industry. I mean, we do sign a confidentiality agreement. Everybody did in the room, um, but you're right. They're not in competing industries, and they're in entirely different functions, Charlie. So. One is from finance, one is from data analytics, one is from sales. And they're all oh, Sherry, so it's not just HR people. This no. is people spanning. <laughs> that was intentional. Spanning. Yeah, because you've done enough in <laughs> HR. Yeah. So that was really refreshing to have people from all aspects of the business. Tell me, Tell me two or three things that you find that is – different with these early career professionals as opposed to mid and later career professionals? Well, I think they are way smarter than, than, we, than we were at that age. And in many ways, they are just so mature and perceptive, and they read everything. They, um, they just really absorb it all so well. And their communication skills are superior. So I... I how how so? How, how are their communication well, skills it, superior? Um, they communicate a thought and a feeling. So they're thinkers and feelers. And I find when I'm working with HR people, they are predominantly thinkers. Um, really? Really? I, I would never have thought that. Yeah, well... You might think that by nature of the work in human resources, they would be feelers. Maybe they operate right. in a feeling manner. But what I've learned is that when we find them all in the same room together and they're in the same function, they move to their thinking hat. You know, what do I know? How can I demonstrate that I know what I'm supposed to know? And so there's more of that and less of... You know, this is what it feels like when I'm starting out on a new project and I'm really struggling with the balance of when to ask for advice or when I should do it on my own. The millennials are quick to say, I don't know. I, I'd like to be able to ask that question. That's important to me. So I find them more open and um, refreshing. In, there's not any pretense behind what they're saying because they're just saying I'm I'm new at this and they're saying there's some things I'm really good at but there's some things that I'd like to learn more. The other thing that they say uh, that I don't hear from the more experienced people is 
I kind of want, I want to know how all the pieces fit together. I'm curious about the business and how the strategic direction is set. And I'm curious because I don't have all the answers on that. And maybe the senior people that I work with um, might have that question in their mind, but they feel like they should know it. And right. They would never say in a room, you know, I do wonder about the strategic direction sometimes because we get mixed messages. <laughs> they don't say that. They don't right. reveal that. I just wrote a post. Um, I believe it was my last post. Uh -huh. um, I should remember the titles of my post. Oh, change. Here it comes again. Um, oh, and okay. and um, mm -hmm. I wrote something about that. There are three words that are absolutely critical in these times, and that is, I don't know. <laughs> and that there just are there just are so right. many things. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about your your acronym that I read in your lose newsletter of VUCA, VUCA. which mm -hmm. which I have no or little idea what that means, but it but it's it's intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, um, but but. I got myself sidetracked, so I forgot where I was at. Um, um, the, the openness of it, the, oh, the, the I don't know, and you know we are we are living in such a world of uncertainty, especially now. But we were living in a world of uncertainty before COVID nineteen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now it's just exacerbated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we get, um, I don't even know how long we've been on the show right now. I should be keeping time. I know we're, we could be entering a break, but not because I really want to get into questions. But first, I think before I do it, you explained to me VUCA, and it just mm -hmm. struck such a chord with me. And I had to look up the acronym because I did not know what the acronym mm -hmm. meant. Mm -hmm. But can you can you talk to us a bit about that acronym? Yes, and and I you know I, when I wrote the story, I didn't define it in the first um, of three newsletters. The second newsletter you're going to see at the end of this month, uh, I actually interview Bobby O'Hanson, who introduced me to the VUCA world. He writes about it extensively uh, because he is a futurist or trends. He calls himself a trends analyst. Um, but the a VUCA trends, came out of the a trends analyst, not a trends, trends analyst. Future trends. Future trends. Okay, so he good. works in an institute, a nonprofit up in the Bay Area, and they look out at 10-year trends, 10-year forecasts. So when they do, when they go out ten years from now, they then they do every year they do a ten-year forward-looking um, projection. They say, what do we think is going to be ten years from now? And then let's walk back to where we are today and say, what will this require us as leaders to learn and be agile in to be ready ten years from now? And for many years now, I, as long as I've known him, he's said we're in the we're in the VUCA world. In the 1990s, the Army defined VUCA. They were the first. Military preparedness was uh, going to be precedented on, or developed based on what they thought was coming, which was a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. And that's how the the name began. And then Bob adapted it as he started writing books about how do you lead in a volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, and what will it require? And he, you know, it, it's been that way. We've had plenty of moments, right, of uncertainty in our world right, and, com and complexity, Um and it's so fascinating that now, in that he's talked about it for so long, and we've we've been entered. Many of us have kind of followed him and his work. Now we're actually in it, and we talked to him in in the end of April in this newsletter, the one coming up, about what does this now, what does this current crisis awaken in us to be 
able to handle this now because now it's not a hypothetical anymore. So it's really difficult situation and everybody's going to have to adapt and figure out what is my role, what is the individual's role in wanting to shape ourselves and our organizations as we are deeply immersed in this VUCA state. This yeah, you know, I think you know, I think it's just I think it's a deeper state because I think when you know, a few years ago we were in a VUCA world. I mean, we still were. It's just not to the de- now we're in a radical degree of it. You know, we're yeah. just we we're stumped it. in it and, and and we're having to face that we're we are forced to face the reality of it and how we are going to respond. Right. But I think that is brilliant, that uh, yeah. volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and mm-hmm. ambiguity. Um, there are, you, you know, there are some of us, you know, it's really weird. And this is really weird. There's some of us that actually enjoy that acronym mm-hmm. because, what it, because what it does is it forces someone like me it forces someone like me, it, it just reinforces my view of the world and that it is uncertain and that it is complex and it mm-hmm. is ambiguous. And it, it, it informs my work world, my personal world. It informs especially my spiritual world mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and how, I'm, how I'm responding there. And now we're just, we're thrown into it and... The future is we don't know. Right. We, you know, it's it's kind of the entrepreneur. We don't know what we don't know. Right. And and we're and we're basing we every day we get these COVID reports that are based on what I would consider faulty data. In that, and it's not necessarily faulty in that, but 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 it is because we don't know how many COVID cases there really are, yeah. uh, and I'm not even convinced we know how many deaths there are, yeah. and. It's difficult making decision on unreliable data. Mm-hmm. It is, but and I will say he he introduces another concept that I really um, am beginning to see uh, change in in the clients that I speak to in these groups. Um, he talks about that one of the biggest dilemmas we're going to face in this time is this tension between being clear versus being certain and. What we need, you know, what we need is more clarity. We may not ever get to the certainty that we used to feel confident in or trust. Just those numbers. I mean, we don't know so much. But can we be clear about what direction we want to take or what, um, as you see what's going on in New York, you know, there seems to be wonderful clarity coming from Como. Um, but we're not, there's certainly a sense of we're not certain <laughs> on all of this. So I think we yeah, can I decide just, how we want to be. Oh, I'm sorry, please go ahead. We can decide how we want to be going forward. If we're going to st- get stick in the, stuck in the mud on being, I am absolutely certain that we have to go north instead of south, then that will not serve us in this VUCA world. Clarity is important, but... There is a sense of openness and receptivity that are also critical yeah. in there because once somebody has predetermined that yeah. they know they can't they can't hear any right. of the other any of the right. other evidences or right. clarity clarity right. offering opportunities. Right. And so it does it does call for an open mindedness and that's why perhaps your group of um early career professionals mm-hmm. are much more prepared for this than people who are, are midlife or, or yep. later business life that, that, but even they're being torn apart now and, yeah. and knowing that, that things are upside down. Yeah. Um, you know what I'd like to do here, Terry it, or Terry you know, I'm I'm looking at my thing, Sherry. Yeah, <laughs> who I, are we talking? <laughs> I, I, I don't know why. You know, because I talked to Terry so many times, and you know, there's an E R R Y in there. <laughs> and, yes. and I was, and I was, my mind was, my mind was secondarily on that, and primarily on 
it's time for us to take a quick break, and then we're going to go through some questions that you ask. Okay. And I want you and I to address those questions and compare our responses to that. Okay. How does that sound to you? Okay. Okay, let's take a quick break. Hi, this is Charlie Hedges, and you're listening to The Next Chapter with Charlie in our new show format that is called Conversations in Quarantine. And we are with a quarantined buddy of mine, Sherry Benjamins, who is uh, a really, as you've already found in the first half, is really a great thinker. And she certainly helps organizations in strategies and thinking through new thoughts uh, what is the best way to manage organizations? And and I I I just love the work that Sherry does. Sherry, you 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 really do such helpful work to businesses. Thank you, thank you, Charlie. Um, and we have talked about VUCA, which is which is a term that we should all sort of sear in our minds of of. Um, Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity is going to be the way of life for a while. Mm-hmm. And now, in your in your newsletter, and I love your newsletter. And can can uh, our listeners get your newsletter, or is that just for your clients? No, we can. We I have um, about twelve hundred. It goes out too, but I can add people at any time. Uh, people that are interested in. And, and they and they send. I'll put it on the show notes. But they send. How, how do they get a copy of that? In the on my website sbcompany.net, you can go to the blog and say I'd like to be added to your newsletter. Perfect, perfect. I'll put that yeah. in the show notes because I, okay. I think it's worthy and it's just well done. And it's it's a very short read. It's not a long, long newsletter. No. It's a very short read, but it's always. Something very intriguing. You do a really good job. Good. Now, Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, and your and your son, who is your yeah, <laughs> your mentor in in uh, he's the editor. Uh, he's the editor. He's really done a he's really done a great job. Yeah, I, I, I love the subtitle in there. Advancing the human side of business. I mm-hmm. I can so identify with that. I think that's a great idea. Now, yeah. in this newsletter, you asked three questions. Mm-hmm. And and they were posed by one of your colleagues, Tammy. I don't know Tammy's last name. C card. C card. C card. Mm-hmm. And she is isn't she the one that came up with these three questions? Yes, she did. She's a, an amazing consultant and executive coach, facilitator of provocative conversation with teams and exa- and organizations. Well, it looks like from these three questions, because I think they were very striking to me. Now, yeah. the three questions, I'll, I'll, I, will, I will tell everybody the three questions, and then you and I are going to take each one, and you're going to tell me, and I have not rehearsed anything on this. So, okay. So I will have to, I'm sure you've done more rehearsal than I have that you've actually answered these questions, but uh, I will be figuring it out as we go. And the first one is, what are you noticing or what has this moment of crisis illuminated for you? Mm-hmm. Great question. Secondly, how is it affecting you personally and or professionally? And the third question is, what questions will you take with you as you move forward? Those are um, those are really great questions that all mm-hmm. of us can be thinking about during this this quarantine time. So let's go with the first one. Sherry, what are you noticing, or what has this moment of crisis illuminated for you? Well, I think that this is now an experience we're all having in our own offices, living rooms, wherever we're working at the the kitchen table. Um, So we're learning every day about how to navigate here, and... It is fascinating to me that the independence 
we seemed to take uh, in our companies, with our organizations, um, is now really shifted to interdependence. You know, I mean, we worked individually. We we had our own tribes and our own communities and our groups at work. But it just seemed like we were, you know, heads down doing what we had to do. Now our head is like peaked up, of course, and we're thinking, oh, my gosh, so maybe I want to be more connected in a in a more human way with my colleagues and this you know hunkering down in our homes is really illuminating this need to be connecting right virtually and interdependently you know that's that's really interesting the way you first started that is that it is almost counterintuitive is that we've wanted to be independent Mm-hmm. We'd like the independence, and now that we have given the opportunity to be independent, we are discovering that it's not so fun after all. Right. And it's, and it's not so productive after all. Right. <laughs> and, it is fascinating. And, and the fundamental, I mean, it is a basic fundamental human need for social connection. We are we are built to belong. Mm-hmm. We are built to be to belong to a group, to something that we uh, i put it um um a group that we that we can we are built to belong to something that is significant that we consider significant yeah it doesn't have to be significant to yeah. anybody else but to ourselves yeah and and but it is it is at first it is counterintuitive because everything they wanted they now got and saying right. be careful it's the old be careful what you ask for yeah. you might get it yeah that's true I mean, we, we many of my clients and people I worked with were in this react 24-7, just push and drive to results environment. Uh, so many of them are still in a reactive environment because they're trying to figure out how to work with teams all over the world virtually. But we are less about isolating ourselves now. I mean, you hear more people saying, and I'm doing FaceTime with my friends, happy hour. I'm, you know, we're cooking meals together um, on Zoom. I watch what they're doing. I mean, there's just more of this connecting to the human uh, that we worked with before, but maybe just didn't know as well. Did you, that's, you, you know, that? that is, that is so true. And that's, and that's kind of like what's going on in your in your early prof- career professional group is that they are yes. seeing an interdependence rather than an independence. Yes. W- w- would you say that that's happening with them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they they were just starving for a peer connection that they just didn't have a chance to build or wasn't available to them in their co- in their corporate environments. Yeah, that makes sense because a wise person understands. Um, I think the first thing that a wise person needs to understand is that I can be wrong. Mm-hmm. And if you if you if you can't accept that, you've got a long way to go. Yeah. If you think everything you say yeah. is right, yeah. you know you, you've you've got a long way to go as a leader and as as and just as a person in society. Mm-hmm. That that I had a bishop once tell me when I had um, I had some pretty I came from a conservative background uh, religiously, and I moved into a more liberal background or more more liberal sort of sort of um, religious group, mm-hmm. and and the bishop I met with the bishop and I was kind of presenting some of my concerns about about the liberal status and he said charlie you know we believe in the same source you know we believe in the bible and he says and we believe the bible is not wrong but he says we are human beings and we take our faith with modesty and humility knowing mm-hmm. that we can be wrong yeah. yes and that was for yeah. the bishop you know and it just yeah. it really rang true and and that has gone beyond my religious life to all of my life in that Knowing at all times I can be wrong, and I mm-hmm. and if I walk into a scenario like that, and open-minded and open to 
the feedback and concerns of others, it, it takes me a lot, a lot further. It takes me a, long, a lot further oh, yeah. along the way. Yeah, and it's healthier for all of us, more genuine. We've and it takes a lot of pressure off of you, too. Yeah, of well, course. Although although it's not, for those that are still in the ego-building mm-hmm. period of life, it's not great yeah. for the ego-building. Yeah. But the other thing that fits into that that I'm seeing now that I didn't see before, and you're probably seeing it, too, is because I'm doing Zoom meetings, the first thing we do on a Zoom call, how are you? How are you feeling? Tell me what's going on. We didn't do that in pre-virus days. We didn't always start a meeting Are like you that. Are kidding? No, no way. Yeah. You know, that I mean, would be the yeah, last, it, I mean, it wouldn't even be the last question. It wouldn't even be a, a, a preconceived question. It wouldn't even yeah. be thought of to ask that question. <laughs> so so that's, that's healthy. That's good. Yeah, that's very, yeah. that's very illuminating. And, and, you, you you know what's you know what's been illuminating for me is it's given me time to to spend to spend more time on things that I want to learn. There's a couple there's a couple of areas that I I mm-hmm. really want to to explore and learn more of, and I realize that now looking at it, I have had time before, and mm-hmm. didn't really. I didn't have as much time as I have now, but I now have. But but I had I had time to do it, and and I'm much more intentional mm, yes. about about yeah. what I want to learn and how I want to. You know, I, I for some reason, Sherry, I've got this I've got this negative connotation against grow because it is such an American concept. You know, growth and and productivity and improvement. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just. It, it, they 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 they, be, they become almost false goals, and it's which mm-hmm. you know I, I want to be better at what I do, and I want to be a better person. But there's some things I'm not bad at right now, and I need to be able to admit that that not everything I need is under right uh, okay. under the the gross improvement area. But my areas have been. As you know, you know my personality, and my areas have been in growth. In it's really been a great time for me, and and I know for many of my listeners, a great time in growth in spirituality. Yes. And yes. and a time of confidence in a power greater than myself. Mm-hmm. And and that doesn't mean I quit working. I just throw everything on this power greater than myself. I still have I have my responsibility. I've been given a responsibility and I have that and and I'm yeah. pursuing that. So that's been an illuminating thing for me. Well, I hope uh, that the people will grow in spirituality and let go of things maybe in the in the part of their life that just were did not feed that spirit, did not feed the soul. Why are we doing that? This is a chance actually right now for us to say, you know what? I'm giving up on that part of me and I'm going to reclaim the part that I want to be what I might become is so much more exciting if I were to build spirituality into my life as as your example I think we have a chance here to yeah spirituality more. simply you know it, it 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 can be and it doesn't have to be religious you know I mean there's right. there's it it's 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 a sense of what's going on in your inner soul Mm-hmm. And that there is something, there is some source, some power, something happening that is beyond my ability and the human ability and the human ability mm-hmm. to orchestrate. Yeah. Now, there's a lot we can orchestrate. You know, I don't want to take that away. There's a lot we can. But the ultimate, the ultimate um, outcome is not wholly dependent upon us. Right, right. Yeah, that's great, Sherry. So let's go to let's go to question number two, and okay. and and I'm curious of your response on this one. How is this time affecting you personally or professionally? Mm-hmm. Well, from a personal perspective, I think 
I'm clearly making more time for me and not feeling guilty about it. (laughs) More time for reflection, more time for meditation, more time to pull out my ukulele and take an online (laughs) class uh, and and appreciate music. So slowing down so that I can kind of get the moments versus, oh, rushing through the day. So I think it's slowing me down and, and having me be what my friend Jeremy Hunter at the Drucker Institute says is being in the green zone. Our green zone is where we're calm and coherent and we've been reflecting and that's where we want to be versus maybe being in a different zone where we're maybe stuck or eating too many carbs, although that's easy to do right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> eating stuff that's you know soothes the soul but um i guess being in balance you know more f- feeling that you're more in balance with the inside of your mind and where you are in your body we didn't i don't know i don't think i made as, as i tried to make the time to do that but i would run to the gym and get that exercise routine in and then run home and make dinner and it seemed like we were running a lot but and now, you, and now you're you. discovering it's not necessary. Yes, exactly. Can let go of that. So, so what time do you? What time do you? Tell me, tell me what your, what a day looks like for you in this in this new, new. in this new environment. What time do you wake up in the mornings? I get up about six thirty. Holy cow, Sherry! <laughs> the dog the dog reminds me that she's got to go out and you know I do that okay let her so out so you get up at 6:30 6:30 and then, and do then do? I do yoga I have a practice of yoga Great. and I love that and and I can enjoy the morning and take my time and I you know, right, right now I'm not starting calls until 9 or 9:30 if I'm doing any calls what about emails? I'm definitely doing a lot of emails and a lot of reach out. And but does that start at nine, or does that? Yeah, about nine. Or... At about nine. So you're not you're not letting you're not letting those distractions get to you in no. the midst of your yoga and your meditation or whatever no. you're doing at that period. I don't period. look at the news, Charlie. I, you that know you what? Haven't... I've just been really very limited on news. I mean, I will look at the news in the evening. Or um, Stephen will share with me what the highlights were, but I am really finding that the news is destructive to my state of mind. And I so agree. Yesterday I was reading the news and I got about a third of the way through it, and and I um, and I just had to quit reading. I just you know it, yeah. I, I get an I get an online newspaper, and yeah. I just I just deleted it said i yeah. i don't need any of this because because it's all conjecture and and, and nobody knows anything it's and, tough. and it's yeah, just not healthy and then at the well, end that's of the great. day so so taking care of yourself has to do with yoga and yes meditation at the end of the day a lot of people start in the in the early part of the day but i find that if i do it at 4:30 or 5:30 uh it really helps me kind of move into a different part of the day with with steven and Oh, by the way, we do a four o'clock dance practice every day. Oh, do you? Because you guys are you guys are tango people. Yeah, tango and swing, and we don't have our classes anymore, so we have our own little practice. And then he gets to bring the music he wants for the for one day, and then I get to bring music I want for the next day. Yeah. <laughs> How fun! So you do that for thirty minutes. Yeah, thirty minutes and laugh and. Get our bodies moving. I do. I am doing exercise during the day, little breaks. So I'm trying to do the routine that my trainer sends me, uh, which is hard. But you're making us all look bad, Sherry. I shouldn't have asked you the question. <laughs> <laughs> I got this routine down, you know. You do. I do. do. I That's love really that great. part of now, it. Now, when you meditate, do you use an app or do you do? Yes. Or do you do your own? I use. I use um, Headspace. Oh, that's what I use as well. I like which, it. Which, um, which, um, which, which, um, 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 block are you in right now? I'm in like section two of esteem, building esteem. I just finished esteem. <laughs> so, 
okay. and, and I just I completed my thirty days of esteem, and now yep. I'm into appreciation. Okay. Yeah, All I right. like Andy Putakambi. He's one wonderful. Yeah. Andy Putacombi is the guy who leads it yeah. all. And leads oh, okay, he's good. You know, he's the he's the founder of of Headspace. Yes, yes. How funny! Yeah. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. So so, <laughs> mine hasn't changed all that much. You know, I've all of my listeners know I have a I have an early morning routine before I, I eat breakfast, and I mm-hmm. I don't look at any emails or anything, and. And then I I am a, medit- a morning meditator, mm-hmm. and I will and I will go typically beyond Andy's twenty minutes for another ten minutes, and so I'm mm-hmm. closer to thirty minutes of meditation in the morning. Then I read something inspirational. Right now I'm reading Thomas Merton's Thoughts on Solitude, which are very deep, mm. and I journal for gosh, Sherry, thirty minutes to an hour. Okay. That. You know, I will journal on whatever lessons come out of that that really hit me. And then I will journal on how my life is going. But most of it is based on the writings and how I want to implement them in my life. And Thomas Merton is, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's a a brilliant contemplative prayer and mystic. Mm, No, I don't know. I mean, I don't. He's very popular in those circles, very well Mm. known. He's he's Mm -hmm. not alive anymore. But he's very well known in those circles, and so I spend time doing that, and and that is, um, and then I then I will read more during the day. I'm I'm reading um, instead of reading whole books, I'm reading I'm reading books that have um, that are like books of essays. Oh yeah, I'm a short I'm a short I'm a sprinter. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not a long long distance runner. Mm-hmm. So I love. Short stories and I love essays. Okay. So nice. those are those are really nice. really great things for me. Um, so let's go let's go to our third question. Unless you have something you want to add to your second, because I like your day. No, I'm I'm you know being consistent with it is t- a challenge at times, but but um, yeah, I'm I'm feeling like I'm taking care of myself. Oh, I have to tell you, I, I play my ukulele after dinner. Oh, do you really? I practice. Do you sing? Yes. Do you sing too? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm gonna make uh, you do that. We're gonna next time we do a show, we're gonna make you do a song on air. All right, you know, country home. Oh, that's it. Oh, country home. Country that's roads. John, Take me home John, to the place John, I belong. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Sherry. Okay, don't that's bring really that up cool. next time. You can't That's bring that really up. Cool. <laughs> okay, so okay. let's uh, let's wrap last up our question. podcast with this last question, uh, which is, what questions will you take with you as you go forward? Mm. It's, a, it's a deep question. Yeah, this this is a tough one. I mean, I really do wonder what we're going to hang on to and what we're going to let go through this experience how will it change you know who we are um i I don't really have an answer to that is this experience going to yield an insight about what i need from my boss that i have not been asking for will i have the courage to have that conversation yeah that's um that is that is really good. Um, I, I I certainly you know I have I have many questions that I'm going to take forward with me and and I'm not going to be seeking certainty, but I'm going I want to seek options and alternatives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are what are different ways we can pursue yeah. our life and how much of this. How much of this viral world, you know, at, at first everybody would say this is going to make us all viral and we're going to be right. or, or not viral, but virtual. I keep virtual. confusing those terms mm-hmm. um, that we're going to be virtual and have virtual education. Well, the need for human connection is just going to, you, you know, it's going to make virtual virtual will be used much more. Mm-hmm. But we still need human connection. Right. That is 
that is right. that is critical and i i think that's going to impact uh, artificial intelligence and mm-hmm. how we're looking at artificial intelligence and how the human can really relate in all of those affairs i think it's going to affect the way we work we will even remote people we will begin to have more office exposure at the same time mm-hmm. uh I am um, questions. You know, there was another question that that I will take forward, and 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 that is what what am I what am I going to be prepared? What am I going? What changes am I ready? Am I will I be ready to adapt to that mm-hmm. are really necessary? Yeah. That one, and then the most, and maybe I don't know the most important, but it is the most um, uh, probably shocking is too strong of a word, but most surprising is that I find myself. I think I'm going to get more politically involved, mm. and understanding that I have one person, and there's only so much I can do, and right. I I can't change our political landscape, right. But I certainly can't change it if I don't do a damn thing about it. Right. You yes, know, if exactly. I just if I just sit at my home and and complain. Uh, yeah. And 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 I really want to be a part of the mix of people that push for a more nonpartisan, mm-hmm. less vitriolic, right, less. Line in the line, drawing sand lines in the sand mm-hmm. of our political parties, right? And more, more cooperation and communication. You know, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be something that's very important to me, because yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Republican, Republican cat, or whatever you say, or, <laughs> or, or, you know, I'm right in, I'm right in the middle, probably leaning slightly toward the left, mm-hmm. but I really am a middle of the road sort of person, and I. And I think there's a great many of us in the country, probably the majority of us in the country, that that's where we are, and yeah. we have these extremes that get publicized by the press. Right. And, right. And it's tiresome. Are so isn't it? interesting, and you know, let's get let's get um, um, anti anti whatever group we want to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I see a need for for that. That's where I'm going to go. Yeah, what do you think? I like that. I, I think that it's that everybody is yearning for more respect and respectful language and and harm, harmony <laughs> as well as yeah. solutions together. I think I'm hoping that that's what everybody is gonna gonna cho- choose. Um, another thing that I I hope that we answer the question about space. I'm gonna write a little bit about this. You know, our space in our homes. Uh, is changing, I think, the way we think about conversation and our space uh, in our brain and our minds. Because we're, you know, because of this meditation, because of this time we're giving to ourselves, we're we're giving ourselves more space to really reflect on what's important to us. So the question for the future is, how will you be using space? How do you define it for yourselves? In that you know, and it, and I, th- I think you know, one of the critical things you just brought up is space at home. Yes. And we, you know, it's all shared space. Do we have, do we have sort of end space that people need to be left alone? Mm-hmm. Right. Are we going to are are we going to give each other that privilege? Yeah. Great stuff, Sherry. You know, we are uh, are 11 minutes from Passover, and I don't want (laughs) to hold you up anymore. Um, Oh, it's always great talking with you, Charlie. Likewise. Thank you for the really brilliant insight that you you never fail to to, um, make my day. Well, you so uh, I'll look forward to chatting and keeping up with you. And I'm really interested in your your early professional group. I, I want to hear more about okay. that. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, all right. So take care. Let's uh, let's wrap her up, Sherry. You know, I do want to thank you for spending. Um, thank you so much for spending time with me today. You're you welcome. are, as I said, you're great. Thank you, thank um, you Charlie. I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in to the next chapter with Charlie. 
Also, be sure to check us out at our website, thenextchapter.life. And until next, this is Charlie Hedges signing off. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Next Chapter with Charlie right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. Thank you.